it's Wednesday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we do love your Word, and we ask you again today for revelation of it. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it produce in our lives. And Father, I release my faith again today over everybody watching the broadcast. Lord, I thank you for ministering to them today in a great and in a mighty way through this broadcast. And Lord, I do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we're doing a series of teachings entitled A Strong Spirit. And we actually started this series last week on the broadcast. And so let me just remind you, if you've missed any of the broadcast, you can go back to mam.tv you can watch them right there. You can get the, the notes of the broadcast right there. You can listen to the broadcast if you'd prefer to listen instead of watch. But you can find all that information right there on our website. And so if you missed any of the broadcasts, make sure that you go back and watch so that you can catch up with us and, and follow through the rest of this series and receive the good things I know the Lord wants you to receive, praise the Lord. Now let's go back over to Proverbs chapter 18, and we're going to look there at verse 14. And this has been our foundation text for this series of teachings. It says there in verse 14, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? I like the Amplified Bible. It says the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. And so again, we're talking about having a strong spirit. Now, in today's broadcast, I want to give you the second law or another law in having a strong spirit. On yesterday's broadcast, we told you that if you want to have a strong spirit, you have to eat right spiritually. If you want to be strong on the inside, and, and you should want to be strong on the inside, and friend, you need to be strong on the inside. And if that's going to happen, you're going to have to eat right and eat good spiritually. Now, the second thing that you're going to have to do is you have to exercise your spirit. You have to exercise spiritually. Let's go over to 1 Timothy chapter 4. and Let me show you this in verse 7 there. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. And it says this, refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself rather unto godliness. Verse 8 says, for bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Now, did you notice it says bodily exercise? Well, bodily exercise insinuates that there's another kind of exercise. And this is talking about spiritual exercise. The Living Bible actually says bodily exercise is all right, but spiritual exercise is much more important. And so there is obviously exercise for your body, but there is also exercise for your spirit. And friend, you need to acknowledge that reality. There's not just one kind of exercise only for your body. No, there is a such thing as spiritual exercise or exercise for your spirit. Now, the word exercise means use of, are exertion. Exertion means straining and striving. And so when you're exercising your body, you're using your body, you're exerting your body, straining and striving. That's why a lot of people don't like to exercise their body. They don't like the straining. They don't like the striving. And so when you're exercising your spirit, the same thing is true. You're using your spirit and you're using it in such a way where you're exerting it, you're straining and striving spiritually and in your spirit. And so exercise is a key component in developing strength for anything. If you want your body to be strong, 
you have to exercise your body. You have to use your body. You have to exert your body. You know, any muscle that you don't use over a period of time, if you start using it, if you stop using it, excuse me, it's going to get weaker. That's why people who are bed fast are bedridden for a long period of time. You know, once they get out of that bed, they got to re-strengthen their muscles. Why? Because they haven't used them the way they were using them. And so anything that you don't use, it's going to get weaker. And friend, if you don't exercise, you won't be as strong as you could be. I started exercising uh, regularly two years ago. I, I started doing uh, weight training. And then uh, this past year, I started doing running and jogging. And one thing that I noticed is the exercise made me stronger than I was in my body. My body wasn't weak, but it wasn't what it could have been because I wasn't exercising. And friend, the same thing is true for your spirit. If you don't exercise your spirit, if you don't strain and strive in your spirit, if you don't use your spirit, and a lot of Christians don't, then you won't be as strong as you could be. For your spirit to get stronger, you have to exercise your spirit. And so how do you do that? How do I exercise my spirit? Well, let me give you two main ways that you can exercise your spirit. And the first one is this, you exercise your spirit by being a doer of God's word. You know, in James 1, it said, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Now he's again, talking to believers in that verse. And so you can be a Christian who is not a doer of the word. You can be a Christian who doesn't act on the word. Now, I want to show you something here in scripture. Um, John 4, 24 says that God is spirit. In John 6, 63, Jesus said, my words are spirit. And Proverbs 18, 14 talked about the spirit of a man. And so God is spirit. His words are spirit. And friend, you are a spirit and I am a spirit. And so when you choose to do what the word says, when you choose to act on the word, you have engaged a spiritual activity and it exercises your spirit. I want to say it to you again. God is spirit. His word is spirit. And you are a spirit. And so when you choose to act on the word, you have engaged spiritual activity that exercises your spirit. Praying is exercising your spirit. You're using your spirit. Reading your Bible, going to church, walking in love, walking by faith, praising God, worshiping God, praying in other tongues, all of these things are in the word and therefore all of these things are spiritual activities. And when you choose to do these things, you made that choice from your spirit. And so engaging these activities is spiritual exercise. You're exercising your spirit when you are acting on the word. And so anytime you, you do what the word says, you begin to exercise your spirit. Come on, when you're loving someone who maybe is uh, harder for you to love, let me just say it like that, you're doing that from your spirit, and so you're exercising your spirit. When you're praising God and worshiping Him and rejoicing, particularly when you don't feel like doing it, you're doing that from your spirit. That is a spiritual activity that you're engaged in. One of the best spiritual activities you can engage in to exercise your spirit is praying in other tongues. When you're praying in other tongues, your spirit's doing something. When you're praying uh, in your known tongue, your spirit's doing something. Um, when you're walking by faith, you've engaged something on your inner man. And so when you use your spirit in those activities, you're exercising your spirit. And so your spirit gets stronger. And so that's one of the ways that you exercise your spirit. 
is by acting on the Word of God. Now, let's go to Galatians chapter 5, and I'll show you another big way that you can exercise your spirit. Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to look here at verse 16. And so, to have a strong spirit, you have to eat right. You have to eat, have a good diet, and eat the right things spiritually. You have to feed your spirit, man, on the Word of God. But if all you do is feed on the Word, and you're a hearer only of the Word, that will help you to be strong to a certain degree, but you won't be as strong as you could be until you eat right spiritually and exercise spiritually. Now, how do you exercise spiritually? Number one, you act on the Word. And then another way you exercise spiritually is by walking in the Spirit. Galatians 5.16 says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, walking in the Spirit is acting based on what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, telling your spirit to do. It's governing your life based on what the Spirit of God is is speaking to your spirit. Now, when you're walking in the spirit like that and being governed by the Holy Spirit, what that also means is that you're not giving in to the desires of the flesh. Desires of the flesh are just the things that your flesh wants to do, the things your body wants to do. You know, your body wants to eat fattening stuff. Your body wants to um, sleep in longer than it should. Your body doesn't want to exercise. Your, your flesh doesn't want to love people who are not easy to love. Your flesh doesn't want to praise God when things aren't going, go, are going well or going good. And so this is the flesh. And whenever you're walking in the Spirit, one thing that is happening is that your flesh is not getting what it wants. Now, in Galatians chapter 5, I believe it's down there in verse 17... In fact, let me flip over here, and I, I won't read that verse off my notes. And I want you to see this. In Galatians chapter 5, and um, in verse 17, it says, For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, our desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires against the flesh. And so your flesh will, will pull on you to do the things that it desires. And at the same time, the Holy Spirit will speak to your spirit and lead you to do the things that God wants you to do. And so there is this pulling going on when, when you're walking in the spirit and not giving in to the flesh. There is, there is a pulling and there is a pressure from your flesh to do what it wants. And so when you're walking in the spirit, you are pushing back against that desire of your flesh and you are saying, no, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to do what my flesh wants me to do. Now, now, why am I illustrating that to you? Because in exercise, both natural and spiritual, exercise includes pressure and resistance. In other words, if I'm working out with weights, the weights are putting pressure on my muscle. And the way that I exercise my muscle is that I push back against the weight. I'm pushing back against the thing that's pushing on me. And as I do that over time, my muscles begin to expand and get stronger. And so when you're walking in the spirit, you are exerting and exercising your spirit. You're pushing back against the flesh and that's a spiritual activity. You're exerting your spirit. You're doing that from the inside. You're not giving in to the desires of the flesh, but you're pushing back against the desires of your flesh from your spirit. And as you do that, as you exercise your spirit in that manner, what begins to happen is your spirit gets stronger. And so as I walk in the spirit and don't yield to the flesh, I'm exercising my spirit, I'm exerting my spirit, and I'm pushing back against the flesh. No, I'm not going to say that to that person. No, I'm not going to 
Um, I'm not going to think on that. No, I'm not going to uh, watch that on TV. No, I'm not going to sleep in. No, I'm not going to hold unforgiveness against that person. No, I'm, I'm not going to sit here in sorrow and depression. I'm going to rejoice. Every time you do that, every time you walk in the spirit and, and exert your spirit and push back on the flesh, man, that's like you being on a spiritual bench press and you're just knocking out another set. You're going to knock out some more reps. And when you do that, friend, one of the things that's going to happen is your spirit man is going to start to get stronger because you're exercising your spirit. Now, exercise is not always pleasant, both natural and spiritual. In fact, let me read you a verse in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. This is in the NIRV. It says this, no training seems pleasant at the time. In fact, it seems painful, but later it produces a harvest of godliness and peace. What's it saying? It's saying training is not pleasant at the time. At the time when you're not giving your flesh what it wants, come on, when you're waking up earlier than your flesh wants to, when you're eating healthy food, even uh, naturally, natural healthy food that your flesh doesn't want to eat, it's not pleasant at the time but you will enjoy the results that it produces. And so there is an unpleasantness to spiritual exercise because you're not just giving into the flesh, you're pushing back on it. You could even call it a suffering, a suffering of not giving the flesh what it wants. That is spiritual exercise. Now listen to this verse in 1 Peter 5.10. It says, The God of all grace who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, and strengthen you. When do you get stronger? After you've suffered a while. Suffered what? Not giving the flesh what it wants. It's not talking about suffering with the curse or suffering with sickness and disease or some part of the curse. It's talking about suffering not giving the flesh what it wants. When you walk in the Spirit and suffer, not giving the flesh what it wants, after you do that, what happens is you get stronger. Friend, you know when my body started to get stronger? After I worked out. (laughs) Not before I worked out. After I went down there and put my body through intense suffering. That's when I saw it start to get stronger. And so that's another way that you exercise your spirit is you do that by walking in the spirit. And so two main ways, it's not the only two ways you exercise spiritually, but two of the main ways that you exercise spiritually is by acting on the word and walking in the spirit. And friend, here's the good news. I said it to close out yesterday's broadcast. The word works. And if you will exert yourself spiritually and exert your spirit and exercise your spirit by acting on the word and walking in the spirit, you will get stronger on the inside. I mean, you'll look at that spiritual, in that spiritual mirror, and you'll think, man, I'm looking good. <laughs> that happened to me as I started exercising spiritually. I could see that my body was looking better. My body was feeling better. My body was change, changing. And friend, as you begin to act on the word and walk in the spirit and exercise spiritually, you'll step into that spiritual mirror and you'll go, man, Lord, I'm growing. I'm getting stronger on the inside. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we do thank you today that we can exercise spiritually and see our inner man get stronger because of it. And so, Lord, we ask you for wisdom, for revelation uh, about spiritual exercise And Lord, we thank you for grace and help to exercise spiritually. And Lord, we know that as we act on your word, as we walk in the spirit, as we exercise spiritually, we know that by your grace and with your help, we will begin to get stronger on the inside. And Lord, we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Thursday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast, and I'm going to give you the third law about how to get stronger on the inside. And so you don't want to miss tomorrow's broadcast. Praise the Lord. I'll see you then.